good morning students today we are going to discuss about data mining which is the part of your syllabus as unit number 2 in your bioinformatics paper this is the last topic that we have to discuss in the syllabus i have already provided you the notes of data mining at your google classroom and it is downloadable in the pdf format from there this is the same notes uh which i am using here to teach you in this note i have highlighted the important things in the yellow uh color however the notes that i have provided you on the google classroom uh is uh, is a plain notes and does not doesn't contain any highlighted portions so it's an easy notes and uh, i will say that it is not uh, such a difficult topic if it is up to the introduction level the so today we are going to discuss this concept here uh using the same notes that i provided on the google classroom so to start it what is data mining so data mining here it is stated that data mining refers to extracting or mining knowledge from large amounts of data data mining refers to extracting or mining knowledge from large amounts of data so as we know that data is a very important entity and uh, data is any information or any uh, kind of uh, raw information that you are having of any of the fields the data can be related to the technical fields the biological fields the engineering fields related to finance marketing everywhere the data is present and data is very important in the today's world as recently mukesh ambani has also said that data is a new oil so the oil is very important so is the data which is going to be the most important thing in the coming ages why because we have large amount of data spread across the world and this data is available in the form of biological knowledge in the form of financial knowledge in the form of marketing knowledge in the form of engineering knowledge technical knowledge in uh, every every other discipline civil electrical every other discipline you have the data and the important thing is that the data that we are having should be correct should be verified and should be an authentic one should be easy to understand and interpretable and we should be able to draw successful conclusions from it and a data which is not verified that is corrupt that is uh, unauthentic as again a data but it only is a useless information to us so necessary part is that whatever data we are having if any in uh, concern to any of the discipline should be correct should be verified and should be authentic and further this this is this data is such a large data in such gigabytes and millions and billions of data apart from having this correct or authentic information you need to extract out the important information that is concerned to your interest so we have already a large amount of data present so if you talk of simple biological um a field we have large amount of data related to dna we have to related to rna related to proteins related to carbohydrate related to the metabolic pathways the diseases the the, the chemical compounds the uh, various medical literatures that you have been studying in various databases so we already have large amount of data since this data is present in a database that we have been discussing in our classes so we need know that this data is uh, correct verified and authentic and thus it is present in the verified databases however there is such a large this is such a large ocean of data that uh, going through every data is not uh, an easy task and naturally it is uh, a lot uh, a lot of time taking process so in such conditions we need to extract out or mine out an important data which is of interest to us only but what we need to gain out of data we need to extract out or mine out the data a simple example may be a search engine to simply search the data but that is not a simple data mining process data mining is uh an advanced form of uh, searching where we have a large amount of data um any related data um, in any of the fields for example in the field of biological sciences engineering sciences and 
uh, we have to extract out the important information from this. So what happens? We have the data currently in the databases, but we have to extract or mine knowledge from this data with the database using the data mining process. So again, as the databases are stored in a computational form, so data mining again will be a computational process. So this data mining is a computational process of discovering patterns in the large data sets. So we already have a data, we have a large data set, but we have to discover the pattern so that we can extract out the meaningful information from the already present data. And this is attained using various techniques like artificial intelligence, through the machine learning techniques, through the use of statistics, computational system, and database system. So all such techniques are applied in the large data sets so that we can discover new patterns via computational process to extract out or mine out a useful or interpretable data. So how can a data mining process can help us? You, you see here that the word is mining, so you have to mine the data. So data is already present, but you have to mine it. You have to mine it according to your interest so that you can mine it to get a useful information among it. You have a mountain, you mine ore from it. So the mountain has ore, but you have to mine it to get, the, get that ore. So simply the, you have a mountain of data, you have to mine it, the ore, that is the required entity that you required from that mountain data to use it for your specific purposes. So the key properties of data mining as are, so we have the data, and with, when we do the data mining, we mine certain uh, data, we work on that data, then we normally go for automatic discovery of the patterns among the data. We predict the likely outcomes of various types of information by analyzing the data. We can create an actionable information that what we should do, what we should not do by the analysis of the data and focus on the large set data sets and databases. We can focus that how these uh, data sets and databases should be created or mind out. So what is the scope? The scope is immense. You have heard there are a number of courses in the field of data sciences, data mining, and this is one of the recent field that has shown a significant interest among the researchers and uh, among the scientists and among the IT professionals. And every IT professional, uh, whether he is related to the biological field or the marketing field or the computational field, is usually involved in a data mining process to the computers to provide a valuable information to his or her company. And uh, it is thus a very valuable, provides a very valuable business information, the scope of data mining that provides very valuable business information. And there are gigabytes of stored uh, data that are present. And uh, actually the information is present in gigabytes. And among these information, a data miner mines out uh, important information that is valuable for any one of the businesses. Now uh, we are going to study this in detail um, as we proceed to the chapter. So basically two things, we could say that uh, whenever we are working on data, suppose we take an example of marketing. So you go to a supermarket like Big Bazaar or Spencer, and uh, this, for example, Big Bazaar, and this big bazaar is spread all around, all over India. And Lucknow, it is, for example, it has five to six stores. So what happens that, uh, suppose we have uh, 2000 stores, big bazaar stores all over India. So the big bazaar, the future group of the big bazaar has information from 2000 stores. So it has uh, thousands of um, and uh, millions of purchases from its various store around the month. And uh, from that data that is already stored in a billing, uh, in the form of billings, uh, from one store daily, thousands of data has been generated. And from 2000 stores, you can say that millions of information is generated on a daily basis. And on a monthly basis, you can say that billions of information are generated for a big bazaar owner to see what kind of purchases are being done by the various customers. So using that type of uh, pattern that the customers are using to buy the things uh, he can plan out that what kind of patterns or what kind of things should be purchased should be kept uh, should be bought more to the stores so that the consumers get the maximum benefit from it and the owner just can also make maximum profit out of it 
so uh, since it is not a simple uh, one shop that we can have suppose i am a shop owner that i the, the so i know that what kind of things the customers are buying from my shop and what are the most prominent things that uh, what are the combination of things usually the customers purchase in my area that i know for a particular shop but if there are, there is there are 2000 shops and there are 10000 counters from where millions of purchases are being done and so big uh, uh, then it's a big deal to point out that what is being purchased more in south india or north india or east india or in the western part of the india so for that we need to have the complete data of uh, entire india and from which we can make the various type of analysis so basically we can do two types of analysis first is by analyzing the data we can automated predict the trends and behavior and secondly we can discover the previous unknown patterns so these are the two important thing suppose you have the data you have millions of data regarding the purchases of um, different items from the big bazaar stores from all over the india so you can predict the trends and behaviors trends what is trending what is being what is being mostly being bought by the customers what is the what is the behavior of the consumers what the consumers are most likely to buy so this results in targeted marketing that what we should target our marketing what we should sell more because the customer is focused on that so what what does the data miner do it provides information so that the owner gets the information on the data from the past promotional mailings so whatever the data we have for the past promotions we can go for the targeted marketing so that we can maximize the return on the investments so to maximize the return on the investments we need the data from the past promotional sales so we do so that we can do the targeted marketing and not only this we can forecast the bankruptcy suppose our store is going in a loss then we can forecast it up to after one year after two year how can it damage our business or it may cause bankruptcy and what measures should be taken that it should not get into loss in future secondly it identifies the segment of populations to respond to similar event segments of population for the south indian population is buying different kind of food stuffs north indian population buying different kind of food stuff so these things you have the general idea but to get into a very detailed and uh, important uh, critical information you need to have the actual information of what is being bought we know that the south indians eat idli and the north indian eat chola bhatura but exactly what type of idli what type of brands they are using that you get only when you have the data regarding it so when we have the data we can predict the trends and behavior from the past promotional sales so we get so that we can do the targeted marketing and maximize the recent return on the investment and this can also help in forecasting the bankruptcy and identifying the segments of population which respond to buy the similar type of items second important thing second important thing is to discover the previously unknown patterns suppose we have the previous one year data of regarding the sales that have been carried out in the big bazaar stores all across all, all over the all across india so this data is not only being used to predict the future trends of behavior but it can be used to draw out certain important information that may be uh, missing uh, when you are simply analyzing it for example we could see from that identify a seemingly unrelated product that are often purchased together for example colgate was being uh, purchased with listerine mouthwash so we thought that uh, usually uh, people are using colgate and uh, listerine mouthwash uh, is not being uh, purchased so frequently but these are the related items for example colgate uh, someone is using and uh, apart from doing another dental care product which is very uncommon is being bought together so this may let us to know that uh, what uh, unrelated products are being often purchased together from the past promotional sales and secondly we can also detect that what are the fraudulent credit transactions so we can know that how many fraud, fraud credit card transactions have been made what are the areas where various fraudulent credit transactions are being made and what are the data entry keying errors so that when the data was being filled uh, in the big bazaar that uh, what were the anomalous data we were receiving the garbage data we were receiving that that caused damage to our original data interpretation so uh, not only we can only not only we can predict the trends and the behavior uh, from the current uh, data that we have that we have available we can also from the previous unknown patterns we can point out the another important information that identifying the seemingly 
unrelated products or the fraudulent credit card transactions and data entry keying errors so that we can use the data in a more proper way so it is uh, to market again the data mining is an easy task but not such easy as the data is very large and it is very important it is very important and this is the future of uh, any of the country to prop to do proper data science uh, for example covid 19 is spread spread now everyone is uh, um, um, concerned about the covid 19 infection and it's a spread so they uh, the scientists and researchers have built a model all over the world with, in which they are predicting that what will be the peak what what will be the number of persons who will be infected or what will be the cure and what how will it will downgrade or how will it be a second wave so these are all predictions and these predictions have come not just from science it has come from the past data from the past covid data that we are having from various countries they have been analyzed and these have been billions of data and from these analysis they have drawn out that idea of when the peak will be reached or in other country when the peak will be reached when it will be a downfall when it will be a second wave so all this interpretation this modeling of the biological data has led us to predict the trends and behavior in the covid 19 infection and similarly for uh, as concerned to previously unknown patterns we can also have that what covid 19 infections previous studies let us know that whether we should use hydroxychloroquine whether we should use bcg vaccine whether you should we should use any ayurvedic products whether we, we can use any antiviral uh, antiviral drugs rabitivir any any of the antiviral drugs so these comes after when the clinical data of the previous treated patients have been analyzed so from these data only we can only predict the trends and behavior to covid 19 infection and, you, and the, from the unknown patterns we can predict another important informations related to covid 19 infection so this is uh, for today we will continue in the next class thank you very much